Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's up, guys? So I wanted to make this video, especially after tryouts this past week. We had Antonelli baseball tryouts this past weekend, or for the last two weekends, actually. So we, I've seen a lot of pitchers over the last couple days, a lot of pitchers that I haven't necessarily worked with in the past that are still trying out for our program, this, that, and the other. Now, the biggest thing that I saw and I want to talk about is the four-seam grip and the four-seam fastball. And the kind of most common four-seam grip that I saw during that time period wasn't actually actually a forcing grip. So I kind of want to cover the forcing grip. I've covered forcing fastball before, like way back in the past, back like blast in the past. Maybe I'll bring that video back and kind of refurbish it so everybody can watch that one as well. But let's just talk about the grip and why it's the forcing fastball. Now the most common forcing grip quote unquote four seam grip or what people perceived to be a forcing grip that I saw over the last couple weeks has been this grip. So if I'm holding the baseball here and I'm just coming across those two seams right here. Now this is not a proper four seam grip, basically going across one horseshoe and then across the other part of the horseshoe. That That's not a proper four seam grip, but so many kids were using this grip when asked to throw a four seamer during pitching tryouts, which made me baffled. I just kept snooping into the glove and seeing what grips guys were using. And this was a super common grip. I don't I don't understand why outside of just poor daddy coaching <laughs> in in the little league uh, aspect of baseball. So let, let's go over an actual four seam grip. Now a four seam grip, if I see my horseshoe right there, I have the horseshoe of the baseball going horizontal for me right there. All I'm simply doing is putting my middle finger and my index finger up across those two seams and overlapping that top seam a little bit with my fingertips. That's that right there with the horseshoe coming onto the side. That's a four seam grip. That's a proper four seam grip in terms of my index and middle finger, as opposed to just getting both horseshoes into the grip and across. I'm just getting one horseshoe that is uh, horizontal and I'm going across that horizontal horseshoe to make a four seam fastball grip. Right, and my fingertips are slightly over the seam because I want to use the the seams as leverage as I release the ball. And I have a video talking about that, so I'm not going to get too far into that. So this is not a four seam grip going across there. This with the horizontal horseshoe is a four seam grip. So that's the four seam fastball I want to be using. Now, why the difference? Okay. So the one that I first depicted, the incorrect version of the four seam grip that everybody was using when I asked them to throw a four seam fastball, this right here. The reason why this is not a four seam grip is when I throw it in the air, right? So if I'm using this grip and I'm releasing this ball in the air, as I throw it in the air, so there's my grip, as I throw it in the air, the air only sees one, two seams and then it keeps going and there's one and there's two so as this ball is traveling and spinning through the air the air that's coming up against the ball is only hitting two seams okay now if i go with that horizontal horseshoe and i go across and i throw this ball up in the air the air is going to push off against one two three four one two three Four. So that's why this is the four seam fastball. Now that that's really important in terms of velocity and direction of the baseball, the using a proper four seam grip, right? Because the, the baseball is really going to have two forces going up against it when you throw it in the air. It's going to have the Magnus force, and that's basically the air around the baseball. So as I if I release this baseball here towards the camera, it's the air pushing up against, right? So if I go this way and I'm throwing. On that side, it's the air pushing up against the baseball, going over the top and the bottom of the baseball with a little tail coming off the end, if you can envision that at all. So the air, this ball travels in the air, it's pushing up against the air, there's air that travels over in this direction, and then under, excuse me, under in that direction as well, okay? And then there's gravity. So obviously the baseball is always, and not just the baseball, everything's fighting gravity. So the baseball is always fighting gravity 
as it goes down. And that's why when you see uh, guys who throw harder, the ball stays on plane longer or it never really has that discernible dip. It's because it's in the air for a lesser period of time. The harder you throw, the lesser that ball is going to be in the air between six, 60 feet and 6 inches. So the lesser chance it has for gravity to push the ball down as it travels. That's why those guys don't really get a ton of sink on the ball. The ball just, just rides, right? And they have that good little spin rate going up. And this is why spin rate is so important now as well as I go into the actual forcing. So when I throw the actual forcing, the forcing that I want to throw, and you see this one, two, if I'm throwing in that direction, one, two, three, four, four seams that the air is pushing up against. So you have the magnus force pushing up against the ball over in the bottom. As it's traveling, the seam is raised slightly, right? The seam is raised slightly and it's spinning in this direction. And what the air is doing as it's moving, as this ball is moving in this direction, the air that it's going up against actually pushing that seam, pushing that seam, pushing that seam in two different types of ways. So it's pushing the seam this way, right? So this top seam is pushing this way and then the bottom seam gets elevated as well once it gets to this point and the air actually gets to catch it. So the air is catching up against the seam and it's allowing the ball to stay flatter and not have gravity really have too much of an effect on the ball or as much as it would have if conversely I'm throwing the first quote unquote four seam grip that I showed you where only two seams get pushed. You have one, two seams coming activating against the air in such a short period of time, one, two, and then you have all of this leather. And while all of this leather is traveling through the air, gravity is pushing up against the ball at a much higher rate than what a, a real four seam fastball should look like. And this ball will ride the plane a lot longer than than the other like this i like i've never really seen this i've never been taught this or have taught this right to me it's you have your four seam fastball here right that horizontal horseshoe index middle finger going across splitting the ball right in half and i'm throwing that and i have my two seam fastball and two seam fastball right i have my two horseshoes there i'm going across those and you can play around with this people will play around with their two seam fastball but the, the concept of the two seam fastball is exactly the same as this. The, like there's really, as it travels in the air, there's really no difference between going across these seams here. This is essentially going to spin like a two seam fastball because that's my two seam fastball there. So that's really what I wanted to cover today is just show what is a four seam grip, right? And it's the horizontal horseshoe. And I'm going across and up that horseshoe with my fingertips overlapping the ball. And what I explained with Magnus force and gravity and those forces of the air, like that's why a four seam fastball is the straightest, hardest pitch that we can throw. Uh, it's just like the science behind it. There's no other pitch that can be faster and can be straighter. They're just, there just isn't. Just the way the baseball is constructed and the way gravity and Magnus force work. Uh, I hope you learned something. I, I, it was kind of a, a simple video, but I thought it was a video that I needed to make uh, after this weekend, just seeing how many four seam fastballs were improperly held by pitchers when I asked them to throw a four seam fastball. So again, if you hold your four seam fastball, right? Horseshoe, horseshoe, and you come across there. And when you throw this in the air, the air only sees one, two seams. That is an improper four seam fastball. If I have a horizontal horseshoe and I'm going across there and this is my four seam grip with my index in middle, that is a proper four seam fastball because when I throw this ball, the air has one, two, three, four seams to manipulate and push off of as leverage through Magnus and gravity force in the air. So hope you liked the video, hope you learned something. Do me a favor, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button down bottom, like, share, and comment, and I'll see everybody next time.